Anthony Fauci, the president's senior advisor on the virus. Good morning, Dr. Fauci. Good to see you again. Uh, good morning, Hugh. Always good to be with you. Okay, this is about the half dozenth time you've been on, and I always get the same reaction. A uh, portion of my audience loves you. Most of my audience doesn't like you, Dr. Fauci. You know that, but, but you come on, and I appreciate it. I would like to begin with two objective things. Kyrie Irving and other major stars in the NBA refuse to get vaccinated. They suggest there's a lot of things wrong with the vaccine. Would you speak directly to Kyrie about the damage he is doing by spreading vaccine lies? Well, I mean, Hugh, it's, I think you have to put it into perspective of what is going on in the country with regard to COVID-19. The now, you know, inching close to 700,000 deaths with a vaccine that unequivocally, from a scientific and public health standpoint, has been shown to be highly effective and safe. And although I do respect people's individual rights to make their decisions, there is also a part of it, Hugh, that is what I refer to as societal responsibility. And although there are individual choices that people can make, when you're dealing with a deadly pandemic, You've got to also understand your responsibility to the society within which you live. So I wouldn't want to be pointing a finger at this young man, but I would hope to be able to get him to understand that by allowing the virus to infect you, even though as an individual you say, I'll take my own chances, I don't care, I'm young, I'm healthy, the likelihood that I'm going to get a serious disease is low, which is true. You can't deny that. But what happens is that when you do get infected, it's very well likely that you might pass that infection on to someone who would suffer very terribly from that virus. So you don't want to be a vehicle for the propagation of an outbreak that unequivocally has devastated society. That's what I would appeal to, his feeling but doctor, of- he does more than that. Kyrie and some other NBA stars put stuff online that suggests that the vaccine is dangerous, that it yeah. could hurt you. That, so you need to speak to them directly. It's not yeah. pleasant. What do you say no. to basketball stars? Well, you know, you, you tell them that it's untrue. I mean, the fact is these are people, they're not stupid people. And yet they are somehow or other been convinced of things that are just not factual, Hugh. I mean, you look at the data the data are overwhelming that these are highly effective and safe. And if you look at the track record of vaccines in general, what they've done for society and the benefit risk ratio overwhelmingly weighs in favor of the benefit. And it's just factual. I mean, it's, it, 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 sometimes it's inexplicable that people can look at data and just say it doesn't exist. I mean, it does. Okay, it's just factual. I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. I wanna to go to the panel. I got my booster on Friday. My wife and I, first day of eligibility, first day it was cleared, we're Pfizer people. We were on the wrong side of 65 when the vaccine came out. We were on the right side of 65 when the vaccine's booster came out. So we were first in line, we got it. We're happy, no side effects, got the flu shot, all good. I want to go back to the FDA panel and the CDC panel, and I'm sure you participated in both, their recommendation. I disagree with the recommendation. I think the booster should be available to any American who wants it, because this is a free country. Equity issues entered into that conversation. We had advisory panel members bring their own politics to the table about international equity issues. Did you or anybody say to them, that's not your job? Your job is to make a scientific discussion about the booster, not tell us about international equity. Well, Hugh, I didn't take part in addressing or discussing with those advisory groups because that would not be appropriate. But what I have done publicly in multiple forum and telling you now to confirm how I feel, I agree with you on this. This should have been a scientifically based decision, not a decision that is in some respects influenced by other policy type decisions. The United States of America is, has done more and is committed to be doing even more to get doses of vaccine to low and middle income countries. We have done more 
than all of the rest of the world combined. So my approach would be just as you said, that is an important issue, global equity. We are addressing that. The rest of the world of rich countries should also be addressing that. But that needs to be put aside when you talk about what's the scientific basis for recommendations regarding booster doses for those of us here in this country. And it's no secret how I feel. I feel a bit differently from what that recommendation is. The recommendation had a strong dichotomy. It seems like they were saying it is okay as long as you don't wind up in the hospital and die. So if the vaccine efficacy wanes for infection, mild and moderate disease, that's okay. You don't really need a booster now. As long as the vaccine efficacy for hospitalization prevention doesn't wane. I don't feel that way. I feel we need to protect not only from getting people in the hospital, that's very, very important, but we don't want people to get sick because if you get COVID, yes, you could get asymptomatic and you could get mild disease. However, you can also get pretty sick and not necessarily have to go to the hospital. So for that, in many respects, I'm agreeing with what you're saying. Well, I hear that. And, and doctor, there's a bigger issue. The government has a job to do, a constitutional order. It's represented by elected people and the president is elected. Advisory committees are not only not elected, they're appointed by bureaucracies. If they're imposing their policy preferences on the American people who are our free people, something is badly broken at the FDA and the CDC, and they need to be called out and rebuked. That is not their job. Do you agree with me? No, I don't, Hugh. So I, I, I gave you how I feel individually as a physician, a scientist, and a public health person, but the process of looking at the data and getting the data as it exists now to drive a recommendation is a sound process. They don't always get it right, but they do it in a way that's a process that's a sound process. I believe, and I've said this publicly, that CDC Director Rochelle Walensky did a good thing and a courageous thing by not completely accepting the recommendation of the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. I thought that was a good thing and I thoroughly agreed with that. The thing that got the confusion is saying, what do we know right now about the data versus what I personally, and this is not me as a committee member, but personally would have done and say, we need to stay ahead of the virus. So if you look at what's happening, for example, in Israel and what is the suggestion of what's happening now, I would have leaned much more towards a broader allowance of boosters for people as opposed to what was ultimately decided. Uh, doctor, your specialty is medicine and public health. Mine is constitutional law. I've taught it and practiced it for 25 years. And what they are doing is going outside of their lane when they inject the equity discussion into a scientific discussion that leads me to my next question. This is difficult for me, but I want to run down for your benefit. The controversy since the virus started includes the botch testing at the beginning, no research on masks for children in primary care, the J&J &J pause, the controversy over the, um, uh, the use or non-use of ivermectin, and there was no study yet completed. Dr. Collins told me it's not done yet. The, uh, the no discussion of, of natural immunity, which exists and ought to be out there. The discussion of herd immunity, which is switched, switched back and forth. The mask discussion at the beginning, don't wear masks, the noble lie, and then wear masks. Now equity issues in the FDA panel scientific discussion. I've lost confidence in the CDC and the FDA. And I actually believe a lot of Americans, a significant part of America, now I've lost confidence in you, Dr. Fauci. Is there a point where you will say, I do more harm than good because people don't listen to me anymore and step aside? No, absolutely unequivocally no, Hugh. Sorry. 
I mean, I agree with a lot of the things that you've been saying. You come from a different perspective than I do. But I think the thing that gets lost in the discussion and that people need to understand, and I do know that some people don't understand it and don't accept it, even if they, you know, smart people who evaluate it in their own context, is that we have been dealing with an evolving situation. And I just get back to what I've said before, and I totally understand and respect your differences, Hugh, that when you have an evolving situation and data are rapidly evolving in something that's unprecedented and unknown, you have to evolve with it and look at the data as it exists now and make to the best of your ability a decision, a recommendation, uh, uh, all the kinds of things that go into the evolution. And things have changed. We didn't know things early on. I always get asked the question, it's a very common question, what would you have done back then if you knew what you know now? The question answers itself. <laughs> if I knew then what I know now, the circumstances would have been different. So if this were a completely static situation, Hugh, and people change their mind and change their recommendations and things, you could say, my goodness, they're flip-flopping, what's going on? But it's been an evolving situation. From day one, we had no idea that a virus that could actually kill so many people would be completely asymptomatic in about 50 to 60% of people, and that many of the infections, almost half, were transmitted by people who had no symptoms. That's where the mask situation got all muddled. You know that. I mean, I'm telling you something you know. And I could understand when people are looking for definitive answers in an evolving situation, it doesn't work that way, Hugh. It just well, no, doesn't. There's a, there's a large and a small part, Doctor. The large part is not, it, it, I'll come back to the small part on the mask. I'm told by people in the room that you knew there were a shortage of masks, so you told people not to wear masks so that we didn't have a run on masks. I actually right. understand that as public policy. I, I've read the account, I've talked to the people in the room. I know that you purposely told the noble lie to prevent us running out of masks in hospitals. I think it's bad policy, but I understand the motive. And I understand changing, I change my mind every day. You right. know, I, I'm on the air every day, stuff happens, I change my mind. But what you said earlier, it's just facts sometimes. It's just a fact that Tony Fauci, not the guy I'm talking with, but Tony Fauci, the person in people's mind, is now an impediment to public health because people won't listen to you. Yeah. They actively reject what Tony Fauci says for yeah. reasons which are complicated, have to do with psychology, mass communications, social media. But can you accept that if that's just a fact, you ought to respond to it and say, Mr. President, I think my time is up as a successful and effective yeah. spokesperson. You know, with all due respect to, to you, you, who I, who I do respect you and your intellect, I just completely disagree with that premise because there are an awful lot of people who do listen, who do the right thing from a public health standpoint. So because there are a lot of people who have ideas about conspiracies and, and changing minds and flip-flopping, that's not a reason to step down, not at all. When I was involved 40 years ago with HIV, and the activist community were looking at me as a representative of the, the face of the federal government and were trying to get things done. And it looked like we were at odds in the sense of, of really con uh, essentially being hostile to each other, which we weren't. That would have been interpreted as, gee, the people who were involved in this particular difficult and, and devastating outbreak, don't like what you're doing, why don't you step down? As a matter of fact, as it turned out, we got close, they understood. I brought them into the dialogue, into the discussion, and the world and the community were much better off with that. So the idea that people right now are not listening to what I'm saying, what I'm saying is the truth. It is the I, Dr. Fauci, I actually agree. I, I got the booster. I'm Mr. Vaccine. I get the right. same kind of heat you do. And right. so what I'm saying, though, is there comes a point where it is simply a matter of fact that Tony Fauci in the era of social media 
is different than Tony Fauci at the beginning of HIV. And if a new face for the program developed, we would see an increase in vaccines and an increase in booster use. So if yeah. that data is presented to you, that more yeah. people would get vaccinated if you left the scene, would you leave the scene? Uh, Hugh, I think that is a completely false narrative that people are not getting vaccinated because of me. I am very sorry. I've told you, I've known you a long time and I respect you, but I totally reject that people are not getting vaccinated because of me. Are you kidding me, Hugh? Come on. I, I'm trying to explain to you the truth. I, I got vaccinated because of you, but there is a large segment of the American people that doesn't trust you now. And that can't be undone. So I want, I, I want you to be able to just speak to them. I, I know your heart, I know your public service, but if you're an obstacle to getting vaccination rates up, should you step aside? I am not an obstacle to getting vaccinations up, Hugh. That is a completely false narrative that I would have to absolutely reject. Okay, then, then if you're, is it, are you persuadable on facts? If people show you polling, would that change your mind? Yeah, so people are saying, I'm not getting vaccinated because Dr. Fauci is in the government. Are you kidding me? No, actually, I believe that's the truth, doctor. I believe, <laughs> well, I believe that given, that... go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry, Hugh, <laughs> that, that is ridiculous. How do you think you're understood by the center right, doctor? I really don't know that you know this. You might have a blind side here. How do you think you're understood? Not by conspiracy theorists. I'm not concerned with the 3%. You I'm know, concerned with the 59%. Yeah, but, but Hugh, you are creating an absolutely false narrative that people sit down and say, you know, I, don't want, I know that vaccines are good. I know that they may save my life and that they may save the life of my family and that I have a societal responsibility in order to keep this outbreak under control and to get it really under control. But I'm just not going to get vaccinated because of Tony Fauci. Hugh, You're not hearing me. No way. You're not hearing no. me, doctor. You're not <laughs> hearing me. I'm saying people see you come on and they turn off the channel where, right. because they don't like you. Whereas right. if a new face arrives, a new younger face that says, okay, new start, I'm never going to tell you that masks don't need to be worn yeah. because I got to, if a new person shows up, I think we're more effective. Yeah. Last, yeah. last response to you. Doctor. Okay. So you have Rochelle Walensky, a new young face saying exactly the same thing. You have Vivek Murthy, a new young face saying exactly the same thing. So even though they are new young faces, and saying exactly the same thing I'm saying, people are not getting vaccinated because of me? Hugh, sorry, you go back and analyze that. That's crazy. I will. We'll That's have that crazy. conversation. Okay. I appreciate, as always, your coming. You know how much I respect you, but I think the facts are on my side on this. By the way, tell Dr. Walensky to please do this show like you and Dr. Collins. I would love to talk to her and persuade people to get vaccinated. Very good. I will do that, Hugh. Thanks. Take care. Thank you, doctor.